right, greetings, do-it-yourselfers. Well, you know, just because you are a do-it-yourselfer does not mean that you have to depend on the experts and professionals to be ahead of the technology so that you can then lag behind and eventually try to catch up to it. Sometimes you can break your own ground with technology. We have done it a few times on this channel. I'm going to try to do it again here. And, um, you know, again, as always, you, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just doing some experiments here. What the premise is, is uh, there is a, a very common problem that you run into nowadays where you have the spark plugs that are covered by the intake manifold almost invariably nowadays on the rear bank of the car, but also nowadays uh, sometimes all the spark plugs are covered by intake manifold. And there are some times when you want to maybe get some information on the spark plugs, not just see if there is spark, but you know, maybe uh, in this example, we've got a person who had a used car and they were wondering, hey, were the spark plugs changed before I got the car? Uh, do I need to change the spark plugs? Is, are they worn? Uh, another thing I have run into this a lot, by the way, is you'll have it where the front bank of the engine, the spark plugs are brand new and replaced, but the rear bank, they are not replaced because the person found out, oh, you have to remove this plastic thing to get to the spark plugs in the back. Forget that, so they just don't do it. I have actually run into that a lot. How would we know that the spark plugs in the back of the engine have been changed without having to take off the uh, intake manifold or plenum? So, what we're going to do is I'm going to try to see if an idea that I have may work to look and see if we can estimate the spark plug gap just using some of the technology that we have. So let's uh, take a look at this car here. All right, so this is a uh, 20, what, yeah, I don't even know what year it is. I think it's a 2011 or 12 uh, Sorento. And uh, this car is actually waiting for a fuel pump from the previous video. So while it's sitting here, I was thinking the design of this engine makes this a perfect candidate to try this idea out. And here's what we are going to do. What we're going to do is we are going to try to see if we can correlate the time of the spark line on a spark signal using our uh, picoscope, who is, uh, which was generously donated by Robert Robel from C5 Diag. And if we can correlate the, the time of that spark event to spark plug gap, that's the plan. Now, I've done some preliminary studies a little bit on this and done some math, and I didn't want to you know, make it too mathematical on the channel, but I came up with a conversion ratio that, that is going to give us a starting point just to test the theory. And if it works, we would then be able to dial in better. So for example, on a uh, V engine where you've got plugs easily accessible up front, and then you've got your plugs in the back that you want to test and see how they compare, you would be able to set a standard using a plug in front, knowing the gap, looking at that time frame that uh, the spark occurs, and then correlating that to the known gap, and then you can look at a plug in the back and see how, how that correlates. Um, in general, I've, I've come up with kind of a, a rule of thumb thing just from playing around and looking back at some other videos where I've been doing ignition. What I've come up with is a conversion ratio that we can start with where one millisecond equals approximately a 0.025 inch gap. Now, you can see where there are a lot of potential variables with this, depending on the type of the ignition system, the uh, types of coils, the, the um, conditions of operation, the engine temperature, the barometric pressure, like there are so many variables. But the idea is to see if we can get just kind of a rough correlation, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but it sure beats taking off an intake manifold to look and go, yep, these spark plugs were changed recently, so let's give it a try. All right, so uh, one variable we also have here is uh, it's possible this car may not start right now uh, because we do have a, a fuel pump issue. Uh, if we look here, we've got exactly the design that I'm talking about. We look in the front, we've got a V6 engine here, we've got three coils like right here, so easy to check. And of course, what you might be tempted to do is pull a plug out, look, and go, oh man, that plug looks new, or that plug measures exactly the right gap, so we can assume the plugs underneath 
This intake manifold also must have been changed. Well, uh, most definitely, that is faulty thinking, I can assure you from experience. So what we can do, though, is use technology to uh, look at the plugs in the back by running a probe under there. Actually, you can run it between the intake runners here. And uh, we can get a spark signal. And using that spark signal, I'm hoping we can estimate gap. So um, hopefully this gives a visual of it. Let's do this. Let's get my picoscope set up and let's get some spark data. All right, so what we're going to use for this is my picoscope, an extraordinarily generous gift from C5 Diag, a viewer uh, on, I think, both of my channels. And I'm going to use this um, inductive uh, paddle sensor here. I'm going to run picoscope. All right, we'll get Pico 6 fired up here. By the way, uh, a lot of you guys have asked me why I am still using PicoScope 6 instead of the much improved PicoScope 7. The reason is because with my particular laptop computer, there is some kind of a compatibility issue with PicoScope 7 and my processor. It's actually a known issue. And um, PicoScope 7 just won't run on it. I, I think they've made a patch for it since then, but I just never bothered to get the patch and, and try again. But, um, you know, someday I'll play with that. But if they fix that incompatibility issue, of course I'll move up to 7. But that's the reason why I still use 6. All right, for PicoScope settings, uh, I'm not really sure where we're going to start. Let's go 1 volt. I think we're a little bit narrow on here. Let's start off about 50 milliseconds. That should easily catch spark event here. And uh, what we need to do now is get this car started. Hopefully it'll start for us. All right, luckily we're still hanging in there. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paddle here and we just lay it right on top of a coil. You can see how this paddle would easily reach under the intake manifold or through intake manifold runners. But right now we, we can just do the front here because we need to do some proof of principle by actually extracting the spark plug. So let's take a look at our screen here. All right, we can see we get some spark signals. So we really need to zoom in here. The first thing is we need a trigger. Oh, well, wanted to zoom in. All right, uh, we need a trigger here that scales like really low. Let's go, yeah, I think we can get away with the 500. Yeah, that works pretty good. And then um, we can go, we can see our spark line here. So what I want to do is move this trigger to make my math really easy. I want to start right at a zero point, like that. All right, we need to go out further here. I'm going to drag over to my zero point right there. There we go, that's what we want right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna capture this. We wanna get, I believe the most accurate way is the longest spark reading that we get from the firing line. Okay, I think that'll work right there. We're gonna capture that. And let's analyze that, let me turn off the engine. Okay, so what we need is a consistent uh, measuring point. So what we're going to do is from the firing line to the first oscillations here. So we need to bring in a uh, ruler for the firing line. All right, it looks like we're like a microsecond off, so I'm not worried about an error factor of a thousandths here. And then we are going to pull in another measurement. We're going to go right to the first oscillation. That'll be our measuring point. And we come up with uh, 1.65 milliseconds. OK, now we can do some math. OK, so using our conversion factor, uh, we measured 1.65 
milliseconds. So if one millisecond is 0.025 inches, then that is going to be equal to 1.65 milliseconds is to x. And I know there's easier ways of doing this, but most of you guys I know learn proportions this way. So um, just showing where I derive the math from will of course come up with an easier way of doing this. Um, so if we have uh, x equals 1.65 times 0.025, which is going to be 1.65 times 0.025, a uh, 0.041 inch gap, 0.041 inch gap. So we should have roughly a 0.041 inch gap on this uh, spark plug. Let's take a look. All right, I did look up and the uh, spark plug gap uh, setting for this should be a uh, 0.040 inches. So these spark plugs better be fairly new. All right, there we go. Well, look at that nice white insulator. That's pretty promising. Let's go ahead and measure that gap. All right, got a 0 0.040 gauge. It should be just a bit bigger than that, and it does. It barely drags through. What's my next step up? I thought I had a 044. So we can try just four, there it is, a four thousandths more, and it doesn't fit. Yeah, that does not fit. All right, well, that's pretty promising. So uh, we were able to pretty closely estimate that this spark plug is at the proper gap just from that. Now, here's the thing. In order to test this out, what we need to do is change the gap on this and then see if we get the corresponding millisecond change that would be proportionate to that gap. So let's regap this plug. Hopefully it doesn't misfire. If it misfires, then of course we can't do it. Okay, so that right there is a 0.080. So it's twice the gap, 0.080. So we should expect to get somewhere close to uh, three milliseconds, right? Because it's twice as much. Let's see what happens. All right. And let's rerun this. All right. Well, no misfires or anything. But we definitely have a pretty significant gap change there. So let's get PicoScope running again. Let's see here. We want to... Can we draw that out more? Yeah, we can. Then we're going to stop it at kind of the longest that we get. Right about there should work. Let's turn off the engine and analyze that. Line up. Go right to the first oscillation. Yeah, and actually, if anything, uh, we have a shorter spark time, a uh, shorter time. So I was kind of not expecting that. So that kind of begs the question, uh, can we correlate? All right, well, here's what we're going to do. All right, so we uh, originally had 1.65 milliseconds, and that correlated to a 0 0.040 inch gap. Now we've got 1.41 milliseconds which correlated to a 0 0.080 inch gap, a little bit the opposite that I was expecting. You know, we could calculate that the 0.24 milliseconds could be equivalent to this. But the thing is, is that it looks like we're just going to run into a lot of variables. We need to do one more thing to really validate if we're even on to something here. We would need to make the gap here uh, 0.020 inches. Do I even have that here? No, I don't. So I will have to get a feeler gauge. I wonder if this will cause some misfires, which of course would uh, absolutely introduce a rather significant variable. Look at this, I have to look over my glasses like, like you know, an old guy like Mr. Magoo or something. Now, this is going to be like a really tight 
Right there it is, right there. Okay, so now we've got a 0.020 inch gap. And uh, that, if, if this is the way things go, we should see actually a longer time frame than 1.65. Let's see what happens. All right, we've got a lot of electrical engineers on this channel. Maybe they can explain why this is working backwards than what I thought. All right, doesn't seem like we're having misfires here, so that's good. Get our Pico running again, probe on there. Yeah, it does look like we've, we've definitely changed the amplitude of the spark line, doesn't it? There it is right there. And let's zoom that out a bit. Yeah, we definitely changed the amplitude on the spark line for sure. Not quite as healthy looking, is it? Well, look at that. We, we absolutely increased the time base without question. So we're on to something here. We are on to something here. Hang on a second. Okay, we're going to stop that. Let's turn off the car. Yeah, look at that. We've got well over a two-second time base now. So it is a little bit inverse of what I was expecting, but we definitely do have uh, some correlation with uh, spark gap and the time. Um, I'm just not quite sure why it's working backwards of what I'm thinking, but you know, I'm also distracted doing video. If I thought about it for a while, I'm sure I could come up with, oh yeah, that would be why. But uh, all right, we're going to go right again to the start of the oscillation. Look at that, two and two and a quarter milliseconds. Okay, so the only thing is it's not linear proportionate, but uh, but we definitely have something there. All right, let's go to the board. Okay, so now we got 2.25 milliseconds corresponds to a 0 0.020 inch gap. So the thing is, if we look, this is our standard. So uh, when we had twice the gap, we have a delta here of about 0.24 milliseconds. And then when we have half the gap, we put a delta here of, it's like almost 0.6 milliseconds. Yeah, it's actually exactly 0.6 milliseconds. So it's, it's um, not, pro not linear in proportion. And what we would have to do is experiment with some other gaps to see if we can come up with formulas for this. But um, what, uh, you know, so that we can look and we can see if there's um, so much, you know, how much gap per millisecond is what we want. We want how much gap per millisecond, but the trouble is it, it, it isn't consistently linear like this, which makes it a, a little less useful. Um, but there is definitely something to this here. At the very minimum, what you could do is pull out a good plug and then you would be able to, um, you know, tell, well, there's, you know, the other ones are not nearly the same because there's a significant difference in the milliseconds. Um, you know, in the world of spark plugs, you know, 0.2 milliseconds is, is quite a bit and 0.6 milliseconds is an eternity. So, uh, there is definitely something there, but uh, here's the thing. Um, I, I need to you know, kind of get this car fixed, so I, I was hoping this would be a little bit easier. I think we're on to something here, and uh, what I think we'll do is if you guys have played with this or if you have some ideas uh, or you want to take the time to calculate out the, the formulas that we could use, yeah, I don't mind applying those. And what we need to do, of course, is apply this on another vehicle to see that we at least have some consistency that this can be universal in application. But um, yeah, and also I would like an explanation. Uh, my brain just isn't thinking about it now, but why the shorter gap, we've got longer uh, time frame on that spark line. All right, well, um, hey, it's an introduction. We'll get there. All right, we'll uh, leave it at this. Uh, hopefully we'll make this helpful someday. Thanks for watching.